you so much for staying with us on this amazing edition of Wake Up Nigeria. It's the Wonder Woman Wednesday. And of course, you know, Wednesdays, we like to literally throw in some relationship tips here and there. And today with us, I have with me, Pastor Tosin Tokwe Babalola, who is a student teacher of the Word of Life. He's a certified advanced marriage counselor from the Institute of Marriage and Family Affairs, United USA, and by God's help, okay? So he's been able to restore several almost broken marriages to their blissful state. And he runs a relationship and marriage summit called Love Path Summit, now a conference that holds across cities. He is here today to talk to us about unguided expectations in relationships. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How are you doing yeah. this morning, sir? Very well, I'm good. I like your get up, it's very nice. Thank you so much, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so, I mean, first off, before we go into the conversation for today, let's just have a little background um, about you. Okay, so, um, well, I'm Tosin Tope Babalola. I've been a marriage counselor for over two decades, mm -hmm. married myself for 17 years. You married yourself? <laughs> no, I've been married uh -huh. myself, I mean, yeah, for 17 years, three yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. and then, by God's grace, I've been able to um, step in, weigh in into almost failing marriages, restoring mm -hmm. them to their blissful state. Mm -hmm. I've also been able to help people planning to step into it because it. Yeah. that's one of the institutions in Nigeria we don't prepare for at all. At all. You get certified before you even start the journey. Very true. <laughs> so, Very true. So basically true. that's true. me. Very true. Okay, amazing. It's lovely to have you here. And uh, also I'd like to talk about, was it um, an experience that made you decide to go into the route of marriage um, counseling, okay. personal or okay. uh, people around? So um, basically, I've been talking about relationships from way back, tender age. You know, mm -hmm. I had the privilege of being the campus fellowship president mm -hmm. of the fellowship I attended while I was in school. Okay. So I was compelled by the reason of my office to start talking about relationships. Okay. But becoming more pronounced with my views um, is a product of the fact that myself, my wife and myself, we had a very turbulent first 10 years. Oh, first 10 years. Yes, very ten. Different. Yes, ten. Uh, we had, we hear two, we hear five, ten now. Well, ten, ten because um, I think basically because we've been prepared for what we're doing now. Okay. You know, um, okay. we thought about everything and anything. Oh wow. And um, I, I, of course, I've come to terms with the fact that um, without sounding puffed up, mm -hmm. when two people mm -hmm. that deem themselves as intelligent are in a marital relationship, it's tougher. Tough. So if you're looking for quality, yeah. you're likely going to have conflicts. Mm, okay, so, so, okay, yes. I like that angle. Yeah, okay. If, if you're looking for quality, mm. if you want a solid relationship, mm. uh, because coming to compromises will be more demanding when an intelligent person, um, please pardon my choice of words, and uh, a relatively foolish person comes together. Ah. Uh, yeah, are we going to pardon that? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Less, in, less intelligent person. Yes, yes. All yes. right, so yes. In, in, some people are just straightforward. Tell them what to do. And they, they don't, don't question, they don't question they don't, it. They don't. Okay. It's not the same when two intelligent people feel yes. that, okay, I know what I'm doing. Yes. And they can give you 10 excuses for every action. Every action. You know, so okay. it, it becomes more turbulent. And mm. I think that's one of the things we had to face. Mm. And of course, what we discussed now, yeah. I had my expectations, very high hopes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all, and then... My wife, too, on her own side, had her expectations. Okay. We met in church. Okay. And so it was like, this is going to be a perfect union of two Christians uh -huh. that understands God and understands marriage. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> we're kidding. Okay. Really. So right. that's, Amazing. And that's another mistake a lot of people make. Yes. Think, okay, because you met someone in church, got married, it's going to be easy. It's not. Amazing. As okay. a matter of fact, yes. to be honest, yes. it, it, is, it can be more challenging mm. because... The church or the religious bodies mm. are very silent when it comes to being very precise mm. about the things you just that you say understand. you wipe, submit. Okay. Yes, yeah, submit. Mm. And submission submit. is not saying yes to everything <laughs> in actual sense. Isn't yes, it? amazing. Okay, great. So now, I think before I ask you about the topic itself, I want to ask, during those 10 years, what was it that kept you grounded and kept you in it? Because, I mean, it's 10 years. Yeah. I'm sure um, maybe you've heard maybe two years at all, three years, child, five years. But maybe when it passes five years, why didn't you think, okay, you know what, maybe this is not for me. Maybe I should leave. What was it that kept you there? Okay, so number one, mm -hmm. we didn't have any case of abuse. Okay. Regardless of what was happening, mm -hmm. I mean, that part was, 
well dealt with. So did you, did you say physical abuse, emotional abuse? All of that. All of it. You know, we're just having challenges coming up with structures that can be sustained. Mm. That was just the challenge. Mm -hmm. So the subject of abuse was not there. Mm -hmm. And then we were fortunate enough to take our time to discuss the marriage before we started it. And we both agreed that regardless of what happens, we are staying in this. Oh, amazing. We're going to make it work. Okay. So we, we did not anticipate what came, but we had an idea that something will come up. Something will come up, okay. So okay. we prepared our minds for that. Okay. Of course, let me not uh, mm -hmm. uh, sound very solid. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that I had my moment where I wanted to walk out of that marriage. In fact, there was, there was a season, I think we're about six, seven years at that time. Mm. For one street week, I was sleeping in my office. I wasn't going home. Oh, I really wow. considered it. Oh, wow. But our agreement, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and then some of the things we had done together mm. made it very difficult for me to just walk away. Mm. We had built a life together mm. that if we are going to separate, mm. it will take us as much the number of years we have used to build it to scatter it. To scatter it. Wow. We are too knitted. Wow. So it became a problem. We'll still talk about that knit. But anyway, <laughs> let's talk about today's conversation. We're talking about... Okay on guided expectations. So now, first of all, let's do a definition. Okay, so um, what we mean by unguided expectation is that we believe, or I believe personally from my research and of course from personal experience, mm -hmm. that um, when we are going into this thing called marriage, we have our agendas in our mind. Mm -hmm. We have our, in fact, some of us have been dreaming about our marriages since secondary school. Mm. You know, I'm going to marry, then I'm... Um, you know, I'm going to have a fleet of cars. Mm -hmm. My wife is not going to do this. My wife is not going I'm going to give her. And then um, sometimes out of zeal, mm -hmm. we create that impression in the heart of the one we want to marry. Mm -hmm. Because we are not even in need. We've not been in need before. before. So we are just projecting by, you know, our personal anticipations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, life will happen. Mm -hmm. Those expectations will not play out. Mm -hmm. You know, and then sometimes also, in this generation, you discover that people marry people, they don't know what they are doing. Mm. They don't even have a good knowledge of what they are doing. It drives a car, maybe it's borrowed, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, it is an inheritance, they don't know. Mm -hmm. This guy must be solid, mm -hmm. and I'm not kidding. In fact, I had a case of a woman that, or a lady that wasn't knowledgeable about the surname she's going to take up. Ah, yeah. Is that bad? Okay. She knows the first. She knows the first name of the lady of the guy, mm -hmm. and knows the nickname of the guy. Mm -hmm. She did not know. The she does not even name. know the son name. Wow. That has to tell you how watery mm -hmm. conversations are. We just believe things. He has a good apartment. Mm -hmm. The apartment might be such that the uncle traveled out. He moved in into it. Yeah. We don't discuss this this these mm -hmm. details. So we just create expectations mm -hmm. in our minds. Mm -hmm. oh, sometimes it is even such that. Um, you have some details, mm. but you are not factoring in some of the things that will happen in the course of the marriage. Very For true. instance, a guy can afford to um, pay your bills, mm. you know, your hair, your yeah. So you're just bills. especially now because even on social media we have a lot of money talks in relationships and yeah. all that. You, know, you don't even know how the money is being made. You just know that there's money shark coming in and all of that. So, so yes. If, okay, even. Sometimes you know mm -hmm. how the money is made, you know what is coming in, mm -hmm. but you did not factor in the fact that, okay, so when we have kids, mm -hmm. this money will not be as available as it has always been to me. To me, true, true, true. You know, because All if my time. guy is earning 300000 for instance, yes. the two of us, yes. he can afford to do whatever he likes. Mm. Now we, ha we don't have a kid, mm -hmm. okay, so he's still on 300000 yes. three years after. Yes. We have to pay for credit pay fees, for, oh, yes. pay for this. Mm -hmm. When he was single and he was mm -hmm. earning 300000 he was mm -hmm. in a two-room apartment. Two. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. You know, now yes. he's moving into a three-bedroom flat in Lekki, probably. Yes. So all of this will have impact mm -hmm. on this same amount. Okay, so quickly, um, just summary. Like, okay, what would you say will be the key or the, the, the key to addressing this um, unguided expectations? Discussions. Quickly, very communication. Quick. Communication. Communication. Okay. You must, you must be able to communicate what is on ground mm -hmm. and what is likely going to be on ground mm. eventually. Okay. We must be okay. able to, we must be able to pry into the future. Yes. Make analysis. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what relationships should be all about. Okay. Unfortunately, the narratives have changed. It's about hanging out, doing mm -hmm. all of that. But we should be laying solid foundations, foundations. for the marriage that is coming, discussing okay. the present, how we are moving from the present yes. into the reality of the reality. future. Mm. Those things are very important, you know. Those All right, amazing. I mean, I feel this conversation is kind of 
unexhaustive or inexhaustive. Yeah. But then again, next week you'll be back here again, so we'll come continue this conversation. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. Very, very nice to have you here. Right now, we actually have to go on a break, but do stay with us because we'll be right back. <laughs>